The following is a rebroadcast of the Newark City Schools Board of Education's most recent general monthly meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Newark City School Board of Education meeting in the Roosevelt Administrative Offices. It's October 14th, 2013, 5.15 p.m. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Blind? Here. Mr. Bybee? Here. Mr. Carr? Here. Mr. Harden? Here. Mrs. Nickham? Here. We have a quorum of five. Mr. Bybee will now lead us in the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> well, you know, this last weekend was pretty, pretty special with all the homecoming activities and everything that was going on. Um, I'll tell you what, uh, the, the students in this district, they looked great Friday night at the football game and with the parade that we had and boy, the band sounded great and the weather was perfect and uh, just a great night for a football game. And then uh, Saturday night with the dance and seeing all the, uh, the kids with their photos and the gallery and uh, all the good times they were having, it just uh, makes you feel good to, to be a, a Wildcat right now. And that's what Doug says all the time. And uh, boy, never more apparent, uh, never more, more true than this weekend when we see all the good things that happen in the community. So join me in, in reciting the pledge. We have a flag over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dan. We'll move on to special reports. Okay. We have... Uh, Giselle James, Administrator at Par Excellence Academy. She's going to pre present the annual report to the Board of Education. I'll remind the Board, uh, the Par Excellence Academy is sponsored by the Newark City Schools. And uh, uh, that agreement is up this year. And so we'll be talking with the Board uh, uh, about renewing that. And I asked Giselle to come in and She's provided tremendous leadership over the past few years, and I think it's reflective not only in their uh, academic achievement, but in, in, in just the way that that school's uh, conducting its business uh, right now. We appreciate Giselle's support of our district, and, and I, I'm going to share with the board, she's a regular at our principal meetings and in curriculum things, and, and uh, now she's getting a few things out of us, but we're getting a lot out of Giselle, too, so we appreciate the relationship we have with her. Giselle? Well, I appreciate it because um, when I first came, my goal was to actually um, develop a relationship with New York City Schools because not only did I feel like they were just a, uh, our sponsor, we should have a great relationship. I was really impressed with all the things that New York City was trying to do to help their students. And they passed a lot of that knowledge on to me, and I have just, I mean, I'm a sponge and I soak it in, and I'm just really proud to say that we've worked well together, that I feel very supported by New York City Schools and things are going well for us. Um, I think most of you are aware or know about Par Excellence Academy and our um, part of our philosophy and the culture we're creating is health, harmony, and service. And one of our major initi initiatives at Par Excellence that makes us a little unique is that we have a big focus on health. So, um, and moving on with that, one of the things that we're really proud of is our scores have come up. We've, um, starting three years ago, we came up, we've been uh, working really hard to maintain our scores and to meet some of the um, stipulations that were in the last contract. We haven't done it across the board uh, as much as 100% across, across the board as a No Child Left Behind has indicated to all school districts. But we did make it for fourth grade. And we're really proud of that. There was only four community schools in the state of Ohio that had 100% in fourth grade, and we were one of them. And across the um, state of Ohio, only in public and community schools, we were one of eight. So we're really excited about that. Um, we had a fifth grade year. We had a tough year with our fifth graders, but we're challenged now that we had some very unique challenges, and we are moving on from there. But we were really proud of that. Benefits uh, of Par, Par Excellence Academy that make us your community school and um, a little different because we serve a much smaller school population is we have no tuition, no school fees. Um, of course, we bus from all the districts for open enrollment. Um, we still follow all the same 
academic standards, highly qualified teachers, um, the Common Core, standard testing. We have all day kindergarten. Something that also makes us unique is <coughs> we do have small class sizes. Um, and I believe all schools have zero tolerance for bullying. Um, we have a wonderful staff, and I must say all of my teachers are um, highly qualified. Um, and going back to the health initiative, um, we have daily fresh fruits and vegetable programs. Uh, that A grant that we get, and every day our students at 10 o'clock eat a fresh fruit or vegetable for their snack. And what we incorporated last year, a grant, is a fre uh, fresh salad bar. In two days a week, the students have an unlimited salad bar of at least 15 fruits and vegetables that they can put on their plate and eat till they're full. And it, what it does is we feel it creates a focus on health that goes outside the classroom because now parents are telling me that many of their students, that many of their our students want salad even after three o'clock, which is really great. And we believe that health starts and academics start with having a healthy body. So we do offer physical education, art, and media. Um, we have something that uh, is, has been a very popular program. It's the live hens program at Par Excellence Academy. We have three hens that come in and the students collect the eggs and we talk about the cycle of life. Um, we also educate our parents on the economics of eggs, maybe grabbing, uh, getting boiling eggs instead of having um, potato chips and maybe some more processed food snacks as a healthy alternative um, and a way of life that we have to kind of change our mindset on what we look at as healthy and what we look at as maybe a snack. But the hens start with that and we do a lot of things. The kids love the hens and um, they brought a lot of um, great interesting information to the students. And we, uh, we have a, our, our garden, our edible garden, which is our community garden, which the community, um, they have beds at our school, and we take those garden, the, the gardens, and we have master gardeners come in who help educate the parents on how easy it is to do square foot gardening. Does anybody know about square foot gardening? Okay, it's a really popular trend right now, um, and you can do it on top of the ground. You don't even have to dig into the ground to do it. So we're trying to get that kind of a mindset with health also. And the parents um, do a lot, and we feel like we've opened our doors. And we've had a tremendous response from our parents. Um, we have a staff of 21. All of our teachers, like I said, are highly qualified. 11 out of 12 of our teachers have at least one master's degree. Um, our su support staff, which we have a wonderful support staff. We could not do it without our staff. Secretary, school nurse, and health aide, um, two building maintenance people, um, two paraprofessionals, four foster grandparents, an AARP, and many, many volunteers that <coughs> come into the school and help out and do things. Um, and I don't know if you saw the article in the Advocate last week, but due to the federal cuts, we're losing, we will lose our foster grandparents because it is a federally funded program. So we're kind of sad about that. Um, a highlight in our school is our Success for All reading program. And it's done a lot to incorporate um, reading, not, like I said, throughout all the curriculum. Um, it's a program that we investigated about three years ago, but I'm finding more and more of the, the, some of the very great benefits of having this program. It is a program that is geared towards community schools and struggling in soci socioeconomically um, challenged areas. And our mentor school is a school in Steubenville. Um, and they're 100% and they were excellent with distinction. I'm hoping they're an A now. So we uh, felt like that was a good connection for us to make with the student population that we have. Um, it's an accelerated reading program, cooperative learning. Um, a database a testing, SRI testing, um, and it has a lot of research base, 25 years of experience. It started uh, at John Hopkins University and now it's all over the country and it's worked well and we were just given the ambassador award for our, um, at, for our scores and how well we've done with the program. So we're excited about that. Health, uh, going back to health, which is a, a big focus for us, and I, I went through most of that. One 
thing that we do have for our students is every student has a water bottle. And we have a hydration station, and that's a special water fountain that, so the kids can use it to fill their water bottles. And they have daily access to water. Um, we have an annual health fair, and um, many of the same programs that I know the uh, annual international walk to school, which is across, I know that all New York City schools have that, so we're um, glad to even participate in that. And we also have a dental health and assilment program that comes in. And another aspect, we have a chef that comes in from ODE because we were um, the pilot school for the Healthy Initiatives program through Ohio Department of Education. And Chef Megan comes in um, about once every other week, I believe it is. It was used to be every week. But because so many schools are doing it now, we, we went back, we are now once every other week. And teaches the students how to cook healthy food and make healthy food choices. Harmony, um, a big part of our school also believes in how we get together is how is part of what we have to do to compete in the world and just to be in the world as far as careers and jobs and we feel like it ties back into our career readiness program. Um, get and through SFA they have getting along together, a peace path, think it through sheets. Um, we have family fun title nights. Uh, some character education things that Success for All um, incorporates into their program. Uh, be kind, honest, responsible, respectful, helpful, and healthy. Um, we have n something new to our school that we created. It's called Structured Recess. Structured Recess is where instead of the, instead of the students being left to their own kind of decision-making process during uh, recess, the teachers now have a lesson plan for recess so that all the students stay engaged. And after we did um, a study to find out that 90% of, of bullying happens at recess and at lunch, we try to make it as structured as possible so all the students are not only learning how to get along socially, but um, all of them are included into all the games so that um, there will be fewer injuries and the students will not, you know, won't be left out. And there's, there's nothing worse, I think, when a kid doesn't feel like they're going to be the last one picked for the game. And, of course, we partnership with um, community organizations. Um, the Nazarene Church comes in and does a lot with us, and we do a lot with them. And dentists and tutors come in and do our tutoring. Um, part of some of the, soups, the service is the food pantry. Um, we've adopted a family. We did a diaper drive last year and through heartbeats. And the plans for next year, we want to still continue with our service aspect, is uh, we have the Triple P Positive parent Parenting Seminars and workshops that are open to the community, food drives, um, book drives, giveaway, and daycare nights that we're looking at. And we have a lot of family fun nights that we also incorporate into that. At Par Excellence Academy, and I'll close with this, we believe in life and what is life, learning is fun every day. <laughs> there we go. Anyone yeah. have any questions for Jim? Anybody have any yeah, questions? Thank you, Giselle. As we move on to item two, uh, Giselle, uh, again, thanks for your leadership. I I think the board can see uh, there's been a lot of progress over the past three years uh, uh, and, and I appreciate the relationship you have with the Newark City Schools so thank you. Uh, construction update uh, we've uh, set a date uh, at the high school and forgive me sometime coming up I think there's two days 23rd and 24th where the uh, pavement out in front of the hub will be taken care of the board will remember we had some issues with all the rain and wasn't quite settled, but they put some a base down just to, you know, and so they'll come back. So uh, the 23rd and 24th, we will have no traffic up there. So we'll, we're getting information out to our uh, uh, students and staff, uh, at least at the hub, uh, in front of the hub. So uh, uh, that'll get taken care of then uh, before the summer. Uh, the building here, we're down to the punch list. I think Dave and Larry have been going around and staff members have been uh, going around ident identifying some issues that weren't taken care of. 
I know that the gym uh, is, is uh, the next part of, of this process because we had uh, so m much uh, furniture in the gym from the other buildings that we didn't sell yet and we moved it down for the auction and so the gym is clear now the wrestling uh, group is moving some things in so we're going to clean that up uh, and, and take care of that uh, technology update um, you know I was in a classroom today at the high school it was really neat to see the students in a speech class all using the netbooks and researching uh, some topics to do a uh, uh, persuasive speech so uh, uh, and I think it's time uh, next month to to start bringing you know some kids and and staff in to just uh, periodically to share with the board some things they're doing so I, I think I'm gonna start with the kindergarten group first to show you what some kindergartners are doing with an iPad Great. it's kind of neat to see thank you Doug uh, now let's do communications from the floor. Anyone wishing to address the board can approach the podium. Please give your name, address, and you may speak for up to five minutes. Does anyone wish to address the board at this time? If not, we'll move on to treasurer's recommendations. Jeff? Item 2A is approval of minutes of the Board of Education for the September 9th, uh, 2013 regular meeting and the September 27th. 2013 special meeting you had that in your appendix approval of the September 2013 financial statements and payment to vendors uh, which include interest earned of one thousand eight hundred and seventy seven dollars and thirty eight cents our fund balances as general fund has got nineteen million five hundred and ninety thousand in it bond retirements got three million six hundred and ninety thousand in it permanent improvement has one million three hundred and ninety thousand building fund has four hundred and ten thousand Food service has 800,000. Ohio School Facilities Project Local has 120,000. Ohio School Facilities Co Project State Share has 2,200,000. 2, Classroom Facilities has 2,410,000. And other miscellaneous is 770,000, which is 31,380,000, which agrees with the bank. The actual balance is 31,382,514.69. Uh, item 2C is approval of the five-year forecast that I sent to each board member electronically with the uh, assumptions and the notes to that. Basically, what I changed from the main uh, from the May submission was that I incorporated the uh, tentative agreement from the teachers and the raises that have been uh, approved by the board up to this point. Uh, I also tried to verify the state numbers better, uh, but the biggest assumption right now on the table is obviously the renewal of our uh, em uh, emergency property tax levy. It is a renewal, and it means it's worth $5,901,000 to the district. Uh, we want and hope that the citizens will support that renewal uh, so that we can continue to move forward as we have with better student achievement and academics. Uh, item 2D is approval of the 2014 Supplemental Appropriations Resolution. Uh, the biggest item on item 2D is the uh, general fund. You see 121,760 uh, additional appropriation, and that is primarily to complete the three-year plan uh, that the technology staff had put together, uh, putting computers. The final uh, building is Legend, I believe, and their computers were 11 years old. Is that right? We're 11 years old that we're asking for money to replace those. And that was primarily the biggest change in our appropriation that we put before you in item 2D. And item 2E is approval to pay invoice. Uh, that was is the reason that this is on the agenda. The invoice was submitted after the services was provided. Anytime that happens, I have to come to the board and ask for approval to pay for that invoice. So I would ask at this time for the board to approve item 2A through E. Do you have a motion to approve treasurer's recommendations 2A through E? So moved. Third is moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thomas, second. Any discussion or questions? I'll just mention that the Finance Committee has reviewed this in significantly more detail with Jeff and had no great concerns or questions. Thank you, Tom. Anything else? Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes, motion carries. Thank you. Superintendent's recommendations. Okay, under personnel, 
I want to note the uh, retirement of Marlene Hendel. We started out food service and as custodian, she worked eight years with the district and we appreciate uh, Marlene's efforts. Uh, appointments and assignments under item three. Uh, just of note, last month we approved uh, the, the uh, uh, pre-K intervention <coughs> specialist that led to the resignation of a new teacher who who uh, decided to leave. And, and we're fortunate that we have Amanda Corona. And Amanda was a teacher in our district who resigned to pursue some other uh, interest and then uh, came back to the area. So Amanda was out there, so we're able to get Amanda back in the district, so we're thrilled with that. Under item four, there is an addendum with several names of uh, supplemental uh, contracts, mostly coaches, uh, to be added in in that part. Item five is salary adjustments. Uh, Lori Fickus and N. Duck Young, uh, 1640 was when they came back. They need to be adjusted to their uh, current step. Again, under item six, another addendum, Samantha Wells, needs to be added under the tutor list. Uh, we have substitutes for the certified and classified groups. And then item eight, under other, recommend the Board of Education rescind uh, uh, number 13-076, passed by the board on September 27th, 2013, to correct an irregularity in the vote and accept a tentative agreement with Newark Teachers Association for 2013-14, 2014-15 as presented by the board. And then B is correcting that. It's recommend the Board of Education revote to accept a tentative agreement with Newark Teachers Association 2013-14 and 14-15 as presented by the board. Let me mention that uh, the, the issue of with Mr. Carr uh, voting, uh, who's uh, spouse does work in the district and that was not Tim Carr's fault I should have advised him and Tim I'm going to publicly apologize to you and the board we should have uh, uh, Tim since Tim takes the, the contract uh, in the district or excuse me takes the insurance sorry Tim well you take the contract too but uh, <coughs> take the insurance in the district uh, uh, Tim should abstain from voting Tim did not participate in negotiations nor did his wife Laura participate in negotiations and so I want to make that very clear so uh, we want to make that right for Tim we still have a contract it was never uh, not valid but it's just it's just a correction for Tim as a board member so. can we take the vote down to the other and then do two separate votes on the separate. on those okay. two I okay. agree. items one through seven to have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendations three eight one through seven so moved Dan is moved. Do I have a second? Second. Some Tom. No. Tom. <laughs> Any discussion or questions? Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Nickel? Yes. Motion carries. And it's recommended item eight. Uh, separate. Do the rest recension first. Great. Do we have a I have a motion to approve superintendent's Same. recommendations 3-8-A. So moved. Dan is moved. Second. Tom is second. Any discussion? Call the roll, please, Jeff. <laughs> Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? I believe I abstain. <laughs> Correct. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> now do I have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendation 3-8-B. So moved. Tom is moved. Second. Dan is second. Any discussion? And my sincere apologies. I I, I, didn't, I should have known better. So really. Yeah, don't let it happen again. Yeah. <laughs> Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Carr wants to abstain? I abstain, yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Again, Tim, we apologize. Item B, students and curriculum, special ed contracts with Eagle Wings, East Knox, Lancaster, Loudonville, Mount Vernon City Schools, North Fork, and Worcester City. Also, a revised agreement with the Sunbelt Staffing. to recommend the board approve a revised agreement with Sunbelt Staffing to provide special education services to Newark students during the 2013-14 school year as shown in the appendix. 
Then we have under item six, we have two uh, out-of-state field trips. Uh, the first one being the annual Washington, D.C. Uh, eighth grade trip, March 17th through the 20th. And I do, when I mention that, I want to uh, recognize the staffs at uh, Liberty, Wilson, and Heritage for their efforts in putting that together because it's a great trip for our, our students. So thank you to that, that group that does that. And then the girls' varsity basketball team to Charleston, South Carolina, December 25th through the 30th. No school will be missed on that trip. Last year they went to Atlanta. And uh, hopefully this year we have better results. Everything was going well. We were undefeated last year and our point guard went down and missed the remainder of the season. And and uh, we ended up losing that game and another game down there. So this year we hope that uh, we have better success at that. So items one through six. To have a motion to approve superintendent's recommendations B, students' curriculum one through six. So moved. Second. Kurt is moved. Tim is second. Any discussion? I'll just point out, Sorry, on these Tom. field trips, as with all field trips, there is no district funding involved in this. This is strictly funded by the groups and the booster clubs and, and the, the parents. participants themselves. <laughs> now, we are, of course, also hoping that the government has resolved their issues <laughs> by March Jeez. 17th, and um, some of them are back to work. I'm really Good thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Harden. Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mrs. Nickham? Yes. Motion carries. Under gifts, <clears throat> every month we seem to have uh, some gifts to approve and from, from Jerry, very generous uh, individuals and families and businesses here in the, the district. Uh, we have a monetary amount from the Reese family for $50,000 for Heritage Middle School and capital improvements. And just to share with the community and the board that uh, a year ago, the Newark Heath Rotary erected a uh, uh, pavilion uh, out back with a fire pit. So we appreciate that. The district then, just like we did in between Wilson and, and McGuffey, put a walking track in over the summertime. Uh, and uh, the family uh, got noticed that our community was using those facilities and so uh, Lou and Gib Reese uh, gave me a call and and uh, offered to send a, a check to be spent uh, at Heritage and so we appreciate Mr. Serino and and the uh, staff at, at Heritage and uh, for their their planning and uh, uh, Seth and Tom and I went down and we sent a video down to the Reese family on on what we intend to uh, put in there. So there's goal posts, soccer goals, uh, baseball backstop, a big sign up on the little hill out back uh, that uh, says Heritage Middle School, one team, one heartbeat, some bleachers, uh, and then increasing the size of the, the concrete in the pavilion uh, so that we can do some outs outside stuff there. So uh, I can't begin to tell uh, Lou and Gibb and, and Sarah uh, how much we appreciate uh, the generosity of, of their family not just to the school but to the community uh, because as we know if you go around Newark there are many things with the Reese or Evans name on it that uh, this family has been very generous so uh, again uh, you'll see some work being done in the very near future the planning is going on there and, and uh, so uh, thank you to the Reese family for all they do because uh, certainly our students and community uh, at Heritage are really going to benefit from their generosity. Do you have a motion to approve Superintendent C. Gifts? So moved. Dan second. is moved. Kurt is second. Any discussion or comments? Just thank you to the Reese family. Call the roll, please, Jeff. Mr. Bybee? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. Mr. Blind? Yes. Mr. Carr? Yes. This is Nickham. Yes, motion carries. Okay, I believe the first time in the five years I've been here, there's nothing under item D, business, not to say that we do not do any business here. We educate kids, and we've got a lot of business with our kids, but nothing tonight under under business. Okay, so I wanted to uh, update the board that at Saturday's auction, we did uh, receive a bid on the um, old ASC downtown. The high bid was 
um, by Jim Van Winkle um, for $90,000 and we will be meeting sometime in the next one to two weeks to consider that bid. But we have a couple other things we're working on to try to match up and pair together. So we'll get with you later in the week on a good date. All right. Yeah. Now board discussion. We can start with Tim. Well, I'm sorry I missed that. I was away with my kids on Saturday, so. Um, but but that's, the auctions are a, a neat thing to go to. Um, you're going through those schools, you learn a lot about the history of our of our <coughs> wonderful district. Um, great appreciation for the gifts that we get. We, um, you know, one of the things I've got two kids in the schools, and and it's such a blessing to have such a generous uh, group of citizens to support our schools the way they do. Um, but but the other thing I want to just kind of applaud all of our students. Um, I'm just I'm thrilled. We go through Tom and I get to go through all the supplementals when we when they say that list. Um, it's it's everything from a chess club for the elementary kids to yearbook in the middle school. Um, our, our orchestras, our um, our marching band, the, the athletic teams, all of all that range, and there are so many kids doing so many things um, in our district, and it's keeping them engaged, it's keeping them plugged in, helping them to grow, and um, and just proud to be a part of that. And uh, like I say it's a it's a really really good time to be a cat. Uh, not only like to thank the Reese Family Foundation, but also Tom Serino, who just tirelessly works to help with these things out at Heritage. And without Tom's efforts, I don't think attention would have been drawn to the needs and desires of the folks at Heritage. Uh, I'd like to thank Jeff for the five-year forecast. Being the numbers geek that I am, I've spent significant time with it, with both copies. And uh, I think it's, it's very important to point out just how the stewards of our finances that this district has been. And I also spent some time on ODE's website looking at a report called the CUP Report. Um, and if anybody's got as boring a life as I do, you know, you can go onto ODE's website and just uh, Put in keyword cup cupp -P, and take a look at this um, i won't bore you with details other than when you look at total expenditures per pupil we're running about eight to ten percent below both <coughs> our similar districts and the statewide average so at a time where improving our academics we're also holding the line on our finances and with that, I'll pass. I had a chance to attend the Citizen of the Month luncheon last Friday uh, here in this building. And I've been to several of these before in the past. And uh, every time I go to one of those luncheons, I'm just impressed by, first of all, the pride uh, that these students have in being selected for the Citizen of the Month. Uh, Doug, you say it well. We have over 6,400 kids in this school district and uh, we have 28 that are at that looking and that makes you feel pretty special um, that you're selected out of a group like that to represent your school and you know we have a little celebration after the luncheon where we recognize the students and we give them the certificate and we give them a ribbon and we call them to the front of the room and they say a little bit about themselves and them, their parents and uh, I'll tell you what the pride that these kids have when they come up there it's it's something to see but, but equally as prideful are the parents that, uh, that, that are there too. Uh, the ones that can make it, and you have parents, you have grandma and grandpa, or you have a friend, or, or, or somebody that the students bring with them. And uh, again, uh, to look across the room and see the pride that, uh, that, that these parents and, and, and these attendees have with, with these uh, students, it's just, it's just remarkable. It's just a great experience. And uh, I hope we can continue on with those. Uh, those are sponsored by businesses within the community. The, the, the luncheon last Friday happened to be sponsored by Park National Bank. But it's just a great occasion. And what made that occasion to me even more special was the fact that we had it in this building. And I can't tell you the number of students, well, the number of parents that had attended school right here in Roosevelt. 
and uh, you know it was kind of neat afterwards to to come up and talk to them they say you know I I had my class right over here and I can remember being in that gym and playing basketball and you know there's just a lot of great memories that uh, that uh, previous students have had about this building and for us to uh, to make the improvements and, and make the decision to, to restore this building and, and have it be the structure that uh, that it is is, is, is really something that's a, a positive uh, for our school district so uh, again that was um, that was a special luncheon for me uh, also want to remind everybody we got some business to take care of here in the next couple months uh, we've got a renewal levy that we need to get passed and uh, I hope that you started to see some signs up in some yards to, 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 to support the, the renewal levy. But, um, yeah, I want to make my plea here to, to keep this positive momentum going that we have in the school district. My gosh, we have so many good things that we have going on within the district. Give us a chance to keep this positive momentum going by supporting us for this renewal levy. Again, that's going to be an important decision that's going to be coming up here before too long at all. And finally, again, I want to add my support and my thanks to the Reese Foundation for this gift of $50,000. And Tom, I agree with you. Tom Serino has just does an excellent job for us, as does all, do all the principals in our district. But Tom brings his own special style and enthusiasm. Uh, he's got a professional enthusiasm about him that is just amazing. And I can assure you that he will squeeze every cent out of that $50,000 gift that's given to him towards the betterment of, uh, of heritage. So uh, again, those things make me feel very fortunate that I'm living here in Newark and that my, my daughter attended uh, Newark High School and the school system and was a part of this district too. So. Uh, so I, I just wanted to add my support. Thank you, Dan. Down the other end of the table, Jeff. I just wanted to thank the citizens that back in, I believe it was 2004, that passed the, the levy so that we could have the facilities for our students that we've got today. And I want to thank the previous administrations that served before I did even, and, and uh, Dave Aldapeter, uh, how they managed the projects so that we had enough money that we could save the Roosevelt building. And not only save the Roosevelt building but make it a first-class facility for education and to generate some revenue for the for the board and for the students of the of this district by having the LACA with us and having the ESC with us it's it's just a fantastic place to be a treasurer I feel it's a privilege and an honor and uh, I hope the continued support there is in November the 5th on the election day uh, so we can continue going forward and Doug and his team can still do an excellent job of educating our students in this district. And that's very personal to me because I have a granddaughter that goes to Legend. So every dime he spends, you can bet I'm looking at it because I got that granddaughter. And we just had another one that's about five weeks old. So there's going to be two cats coming out of my family. And I know that we're going to spend the dollars right as long as the citizens give us the chance to continue. At the risk of... Uh beating this uh, this subject which is a very important subject I, I want to point out something you know we, we adopted this five-year forecast this evening and Jeff was very uh, good to provide us two copies of the draft one is what the five-year forecast looks like if we pass this renewal levy and that's very important this is not new money this is a renewal levy and in that renewal levy uh, if we pass that, um, we, we end up in the very first year that can be affected by this with a with a modest positive uh, balance of, of revenue over expenses of, of $586,000. But if we don't pass that, we end up with a minus $5.314 million balance. That's, to me, a fairly stark picture of what happens on the one hand if we can just pass the rule levy continue to provide us with the dollars we need to fund our schools and 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 do all of the good things that we've done with those dollars and and spend them um, very well or or not pass that and end up with uh, that first year that fiscal year of 2015 with a minus 5.3 million dollar balance so Jeff I appreciate you providing us with that and uh, with that I pass you kind of threw me off, Kurt. You normally pass. I was ready to <laughs> step in there. But I think that, that when E.F. Hutton has something to say over here, uh, that it's, uh, it's very valuable information. Uh, I wanted to uh, point out a couple things. Number one, 
uh, we, we had an interesting day today, or I, I did, and I think our district did also. Is uh, a couple weeks ago, I received a call from the superintendent of Hamilton Schools uh, near Cincinnati, who called and asked if she could send a team of of uh, directors and and uh, uh, principals and things like that to our district uh, to see what we're doing because we're their most similar district. And they've been watching us for a few years. And this past year when they looked, at, we just really blew everybody out of the water. And so she wanted to send, send a team here. And we'll certainly uh, let anybody come here because we, we learned a lot from Hamilton today. But I'll, sh I'll share a little bit of, of the conversation and the visit uh, where we, we started here and, and Mindy and Mora uh, shared a lot of our curriculum and, and uh, the way we're uh, professional development our staff and just basically the way we're uh, addressing uh, uh, our curricular needs uh, which was very good uh, from there we went to the, the high, high school and, and shared some of our programs and our, our staff talked to them and, and uh, w which was really neat but the best thing I got on a day when they were leaving is two of them stopped me and two ladies and said you know what uh, Doug, you guys are really on the ball here. We see a lot of good leadership in this district. But I want to point out how pleasant your students were to us today and how friendly and polite and well-managed our hallways are at the high school. Uh, that just uh, floored them. I kept and, Kept yeah. Oh, Kurt. Yeah. Kept. Ben. Yeah. That helped. Thank you, Kurt. <laughs> we appreciate it. Uh, but that was that was kind of uh, neat to hear, and because we are proud of our students here, and and they are well behaved, and and uh, they are providing tremendous leadership for us in our district, and I think that's the ultimate compliment that that we could have uh, received today. Um, uh, some of the board members have have uh, spoke that uh, Jeff's talked uh, a little bit about our renewal, and uh, I'd just like to share tonight that uh, five years ago in, in August uh, when I came here we started talking about uh, things we needed to do and started observing some things and and over time we, we talk a lot about uh, what will uh, pass a renewal for us is the way we conduct ourselves and the way we can conduct our, our, our business here in the school district and I think uh, you know I want to point out we uh, we appreciate the support we get from our community, uh, not just financially, but in so many other ways. And it's not easy as a property owner to these days to to uh, say, hey, my taxes are going to a good, a good cause. And I think the fact that in 2009, the Board of Education pointed out that uh, this money should last us three years. And I think it's important to note, we are not asking for any increase uh, from our property owners four or five years later and you can see our forecast and 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 how it looks with with the passage of the renewal but when you turn around and, and look at the fact that yes we did complete the building project under budget even added a building uh, more than likely we would be sitting on grass had this project not went well right where we're at today so we're able to save a 1927 building uh, Jeff pointed out not only that well we did forget to pay our electric bill uh, <laughs> right on right on cue there uh, not sure what what happened to the lights uh, maybe it's sensors and nobody's moving right that's now. that's your cue yeah You're that's finished. my cue I'm finished yeah thank you Brian uh, but I I, I do think blocked by the laptop oh, okay uh, uh, I do think it's uh, uh, we need to point out that we did complete this uh, uh, project under budget on time and was able to sell uh, instead of uh, 11 buildings we did 12 from a student achievement standpoint uh, our student achievement and it's recorded it's it's uh, and it's easy to follow we've improved on a number of indicators that uh, we've reached this past year we had 23 of 24 the highest percentage ever and I think if you look back each year we've climbed up and our percentage has gained um, our value added uh, all, all things within our grade card have improved our graduation rate which was in the upper 60s and low 70s is at 86 percent and we did not add uh, any administrators back into our budget since 2009